Hey YouTube, Stove Mods is back with another theory lesson. Today I want to talk about important specifications for hobo stoves like size, shape, material and important details or working mechanics. As you can see I made two pictures. Um, that's just the shape of the stove and that's the same thing in function, I mean burning. Um, let's go from the bottom to the top. I always recommend when building a stove to have a bottom because once you use it in the woods you know you don't want to set fire to the woods so having a bottom here where fire can't get through and even have the walls go a little bit up there will just be much more safe than having it stand on the ground and drop all the hot parts on the ground of the forest that might really be dangerous. Secondly, you need some ventilation holes where the air can get in so the fire has enough air. Those should of course be below the grid so that, that the, the air can get through the grid and really reach the fire. Of course you need a grid. Some people build stoves without a grid and of course you can have a fire in them but it will never burn very clean. You really really if you want to have an efficient stove you need a grid to put your fire on. Next thing is you need a feeding hole because once you have a pot standing on your stove there's no way that you can get any more fuel or wood in it so I recommend to have a, a hole that's not too big just a size maybe like that that you can put some thicker sticks through to feed the fire um, and I'd rather create the hole near to the upper part than the lower part because you want to see you want to feed the fire from above not from below that's what I see with many IKEA stoves for example they all make the the hole here and and I don't know how they feed the fire but in my opinion it makes no sense I don't know why people are doing that I would use the hole a little bit higher and it's not the only reason to to feed the fire to have that hole but also you need some ventilation above the grid because it will burn cleaner and more efficient um, if you have some secondary air come in you'll have a better burn you just get more heat for your fuel and then last but not least if you wanna boil or cook some stuff on your stove you need to find a way for the air or the fire to get out again so you would need holes very close to the top as well or, or you need some other system anyway to get the fire out here. Now I'm re really being picky here but one more important thing make this holes a little smaller than the ventilation holes because what also makes the fire more efficient is to have a little bit of compression in the burning chamber and you create that by having smaller you know exit holes than intake holes. I see lots of stove, stoves that have for the air intake here some really tiny holes. Some people just drill three holes there and expect to have a nice fire. Folks, fire needs air and that's not entirely true what I'm saying but but the rough thing is the more air the more fire you will have so please please make those ventilations, ventilation holes big enough to get lots of air in and also those exit holes need to be big enough to not um, kill the fire you know once once the smoke can't get out your fire will die immediately so as I said those need to be smaller than this ones but still 
make sure there's going enough air through the stove. That's really, really important to have a good fire going. The size always depends on what you are looking for, but let's say you have the classic situation, you're looking for a hobo stove that you want to take for traveling and for cooking. In my opinion, the best size or volume is between 1 and 3 liters for several reasons. Um, first of all, fire needs a certain space or size to really be efficient and what, below 1 liter that might be, I mean it, it works, there are smaller hobo stoves out there, but I think the fire won't work very efficient, it's just too tiny. Second thing. If you take it for traveling, you want to be able to transport it, so it shouldn't be too big. And of course, it, sh it shouldn't take too much fuel. If, if you have a stove that is really, really big, you will burn lots of fuel for nothing. And maybe that is important when you're out there and don't have that much fuel. So, so much about the size, about the shape. Definitely, a stove should be higher than its wide. To be more specific, in my opinion, it should be one and a half times to two times higher than its wide because fire needs space to develop. Apart from that, in my opinion, the best shape of a hobo stove is round. You know there are hobo stoves that have the you know, the ground shape of a triangle or of a square. Of course that works, but um, the rounder your shape gets, the more centralized will your fire be. And um, that makes it burn more efficient. Let's say you have a triangle, then um, you have lots of wood in the corners and it doesn't reach the middle and doesn't catch fire. It's just not very efficient. So the most efficient shape for a hobo stove in the diameter is of course to be round. The material, of course you can use tin cans as I do a lot, but if you want something that lasts for a long time that you can use over years, I think a tin can is just not stable enough. It will rust away probably. Um, but also you don't want to go too heavy because you want to use your stove for traveling and that's why I think, and of course I'm planning a project here, something like this, like thin quality steel is probably your best bet for a hobo stove that you can use over years and that is really stable. This thing won't break or bend except you really put some force on it. What I'm not intending to do. That is about it. So if you follow all the advices I just gave you, you should have a stove that works pretty well. If you have any questions about that, just ask me, contact me. I hope it was interesting and um, I hope it helps you to build a nice stove. Bye, see you next time.